Dr. Bart Rademacher, and this is Prescription for Your Transformation, Real People, Real Conversations, and Real Success. Once again, you know, back with an incredible human being that's insightful, he's an incredible coach, incredible parent, incredible husband, incredible a lot of things that you would want to emulate as well. And so I encourage you to listen to any of our interviews, particularly with this membership program, Create Your Legendary Life. Because if you want to live that life that you desire, then there are so many tools and resources that you can tap into and just reach out to uh, tadecooper.com and you'll find them. But this is not the plug for him necessarily <laughs> because it's really all about, you know, what, what agency, what resources can we tap into so we don't become the victim of the deluge of information that's out there. Because truly, with this advanced technology in, in our world today, you know, we, we, there's so much clickbait out there. There's so many marketing geniuses out there just pulling our attention. And then you have all the information out there regarding politics, religion, whatever that is, that really becomes, uh, I would say, disempowering in so many different ways. Simply because we're drawn in, we're, we're, we're pulled into this drama of, of unreality. I mean, it's not real stuff. I'm not going to go outright and say lies, but it's mis misrepresentations of life in general. And perhaps um, it's, it's taking us away from what we need to really focus on. So I'm really super excited to be talking to Chad Cooper today to kind of guide us, you know, how is it that we need to begin to either distance ourselves from this information? I mean, obviously, you know, we are in this space of social distancing, of course, but maybe there's some other places where we need to take some distance. Chad. Well, yeah, I th thanks. I, I appreciate uh, the words. I'm still laughing on the inside. So if uh, people are tuning in and they've never been on a show or done anything. I always crack up, Bart, because it's like we 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 talk about okay, ready and we're live. <gasps> hey, and then it's right, and and that's really funny because we want to present in a certain way. And what I found is that we tend to ignore that in the media, the, as you call it, the clickbait, and all of this the rhetoric that is going on today, and. The, the last thing that you said, I think, was, was um, like spot on in terms of what is going on to draw us in. And it kind of got my attention in comparing it to other things that are highly controversial, like pornography is an example. Now, I don't want to go into the, the rabbit hole of, of whether pornography is acceptable or, or whatever you're, you know, unacceptable, whatever you're um, personal views are, it's not about pornography. The point is that we are surgical in our point of view about pornography, yet we are being inundated. And, and as you said, the clickbait is like consuming. I personally do my absolute best to not consume television. I don't even have my cable connected. It's literally not even connected. I have one TV. And going on the internet, I don't consume social media. Yet, I look at it and go, if I am trying to avoid it like the plague, but I have to be on social media for business purposes, and I get sucked into it, I, can, I can't even imagine people who are out there consuming this stuff and intentionally going into a particular party side of you know Fox News or CNN kind of, of, of decision and blindly just going, oh, this must be good for me. I, I don't think either side's good for us today. And, and I look at this and go, what is it that we're, we're trying to grasp? And I, I can look at pornography is you can make a pretty clear decision which side you're, you're on with that and whether you're doing it in the shadows or whether you do it openly. But media, we have our positions, yet we don't feel safe to express them. And most people don't realize these outlets are just taking random writings. People who haven't even gone to journalism school, let alone know that there's 12 tenets or uh, ethics of journalism, 
in how many of those principles are being violated. That is really concerning to me, regardless of what side that you sit on. And to, to look at it and go APA and, and American Psychological Association to say, are you following protocol in references and footnotes in the way that you actually write this? And I'm kind of at a position and I'm an optimistic person to go, I think we've hit a tipping point that we don't have an answer for right now in ethical journalism. And so I guess my question in this, this rant of, of sorts is, are you being surgical in what you consume? Are you saying, I trust, but it's still my responsibility to verify? Are you looking at counterpoints, even so that you can say, well, I'm against this party. How do you know? Consume that party's you know, material or what they're writing so you know what you stand for, or what you're against. Right. But so many of us are just blindly consuming this stuff, and it's like we're junk food binging. It's not good for us. You know, it's interesting, and um, I, I'm talking about not watching you know, uh, TVs or movies. I just watched the movie Mr. Jones, and this is actually about a journalist who's, who's claiming back in the 1920s, I believe, <clears throat> you know, how uh, journalism was the most noble profession, and basically stating that, you know, we just present the facts. And his whole mission was to uncover what was happening in the Ukraine, um, you know, prior to the Second World War, and um, and how he was also defamed and and um, delit de de legit de de legitimized, legitimized. Sure, you got yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I got that. <laughs> um, and um, you know, because of you know false, um, you know. Uh, presenting false journalism. And so it was interesting you know, he was in the pursuit of truth. And so I think that's the challenge that we have today is that there's so much less of the pursuit of truth versus the pursuit of a mission or an agenda that serves the individual rather than the whole. And I think that's, that's unfortunate that we have to deal with today. And so, you know, with the easy access Interesting, and this is my viewpoint, and I'm curious to see what you feel about it, but I think with the, the, the advanced technology and the democratization of information, I think um, we will go through a pivot at some point where information will be more readily available and not so easily influenced by others so that we can actually pick what's, what's real and true. The challenge is, is deciphering what is real and what's not. And I, you know, I like the fact that you're teaching people the seven characteristics of a legendary life because is, as we view this information, I think it's important to appreciate, look, am I a mission right now, right? Am I, am I free, you know, am I free from all the other influences that are affecting how I, how I perceive things? You know, am I coming from that place of love? And then do I feel safe? You know, can I speak my truth through love? All these things. And so if we can begin to interpret or present information in that context, I think we'll make a huge change. So then we're left with, okay, Chad, okay, Bart, you, you, you've made a, a strong point and you, you've got a, a complaint or a rant. Great, I agree, I disagree. I think the more important question is, is okay, we've identified some symptoms. What do we want to do about it? What are our options? What are the alternatives? And it begins with really, I think, understanding truth. And I wish I was the author of this, but it's so brilliantly done. I, I just give credit where it's due. And Matt Church, who's from Down Under in Australia, is a brilliant individual and just a, an amazing human being. And he came up with these eight levels of truth. And he says, there's the truth. And that's something that's true in all situations for all beings. That's absolute truth. That's rare that that, uh, you know, happens. Um, gravity is the truth, okay? But the vast majority of the time, it's really our personal truth, and that's a relative tr truth, right? That's something that's true for you but may not be true for another. And that's really where I think that we get confused because – 
Then we get into dodgy, which is like whipped cream. It's, you know, it's strictly true, but intentionally deceptive. And that's where the line gets crossed. So it's really important from there that we really understand. Then it goes to plight, repressed, omissions, self-deceit, and then just flat out deceit, right? Out, outright lies. Is what we're consuming, where does it sit on the truth scale? Is it kind of whipped cream or relative truth? In, in my belief in the freedom to press and freedom of speech is that journalists are to report the news, leave it to us to determine that relative personal truth, okay? And that's what makes politics and in, in elections and freedom of choice so amazing in our country. So we get to choose. But when the narrative gets put in, then it becomes the whipped cream is being reported as the truth, but in reality, it's strictly true, but intentionally deceptive. In other words, there's a biased narrative that's being put in there, right. okay? And so there's omissions in, in those things that are going on, and that's where we have clearly violated the, the ethics. So what is our option in that? Our option is that we can trust they're doing the best that they can with the information they have at the time. I wanna believe in the best of, of people. Regardless, I still have the responsibility to verify what they're reporting. So as an example of that is voting, absentee, because I was supposed to be out of this bloody country, but I can't go anywhere, right? None of us can. So I have an absentee. So I can lo look at all of the candidates. That's the truth. Here's for who's running for office. Now it's my responsibility to go out, check out their, their web page or their social media, see what do they stand for, their personal truth. And then this is the responsibility part. It's going to take some work to research what they're saying versus their behavior in history. Oh my gosh, that sounds like work. I just want to vote for the president. The most important thing to vote for are your local elected officials because those are the ones that affect your taxes the most. Those are the ones that affect your school system and your local tax and schools or uh, businesses, et cetera. But that's a responsibility to live in a free society is we need to go in and dig in research. And I literally did that at two in the morning, researching every single candidate so that I can stand behind my personal truth and say, I made these educated decisions, not just, well, that's a good name or, oh, they're the incumbent or this is what this says, but in reality, that's not their behavior. That's always our responsibility. And so that's why I say is consume whatever you want, but take the responsibility to verify it. When you do that, right. I think you'll be safe. Yeah, and that's the key. You know, the key is to find yourself in a, in a grounded space where, you know, you're not affected by all sorts of internal or external imbalances, as I like to put it, and be able to objectively look at the facts and, and objectively look at, at, at how the facts are being presented to you, where the gaps are in any of that information, where that misrepresentation is, for whatever reason, it's not a judgment issue, but ultimately you have to accept one thing. <clears throat> whatever, de whatever decision you make today is gonna affect your tomorrow. And by not assuming that responsibility and that accountability in that decision is gonna affect your tomorrow. So you can't really complain about it if you haven't done the work. And so I think your point is really well taken that, you know, as individuals, you know, we have our own freedom and as much as everybody else has their own freedom to say and do what they want, but it's up to us to choose that validity. And this is one of the reasons I have this platform, by the way, so that people can actually experience the authenticity of my interviewees like you, so that it's easier for them to make a determination of what's real, what's not. And you still have the freedom to choose to agree or, or, or disagree. But I like your point, and I think it's, it's incredibly important for all of us, is that if we don't like our life the way that it is now, we have to make better decisions. And that starts by doing the work, doing the investigative work, finding out what's true to the best of your ability, and then make the right decision. And when we do that, what we actually have is the opportunity to get past the rhetoric of the noise of what's being reported 
and actually go grab a coffee or my preference a scotch and sit down with somebody and actually hear about their personal truth. And what you find is that the prejudice gets erased and we find that we actually have far more in common than what divides us. And that's our responsibility as well. Are there differences that you and I have? I guarantee it. But there's far more that, that unites us and binds us than what separates us in our, in our viewpoints. If we actually change that narrative for ourselves and start looking for what actually brings us together, we'll find that there's more than ample for us to actually be able to do some work together. So that's what we need to be really, really careful and diligent about what we're consuming out there, regardless of which side it's being projected from. Yeah, that's sort of like how you start off as well. I mean, what's right, what's wrong is always available to us and what's right is also. And the same thing as, you know, problems or opportunities. And, and here's the same thing. It's, it's the, the, the absence of truth or the presence of truth. You know, what is true and, and what's not. And so going for that is the absolute key. And so I totally agree with you on that one. Uh, Chad, I really want to thank you for today. This is a, a brilliant um, insight to what it is that we need to be doing today to make sure that our futures are preserved. And also, by the way, the purpose of my program is um, tapping into that collective wisdom and creating a space of generative collaboration so that we can work together, that there is that space that we can all work together, not find what's wrong with others, but really find out what's right. I give you the last word. Get away from the monotony in what's being reported and go sit with somebody and find out what's unique, what's great about them. And I think that what you'll find is you're a lot happier doing that than consuming the junk food binging of media today. That's my invitation. Totally agree. Thank you so much, Chad. And I'm Dr. Bart Rademacher, Prescription for Your Transformation. Real people, real conversations, and real success bring to you enlightening conversations of some of the masters of, of our planet that give you the insights that you need to create your own legendary life. I'm Dr. Bart Rademacher. I'll be back. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Dr. Rademacher's Prescription for Your Transformation. Continue the path towards discovering your own authentic genius by tuning in next time for more real conversations with real people.